Amen. Praise the Lord. Welcome to the On Point Woman with Dr. Ronnie. I'm excited to be here today to share the good word of God with us. And I have a special guest today, and I'm really thrilled. I am thrilled to introduce my friend from UK. We've been friends for years. In fact, she was instrumental when I was getting married, you know, way back then. And I'm really thrilled to welcome Sister Christine Abiodre. Said, you know, welcome to the program. How are you today? Thank you. Um, I'm glad to be here. I'm lovely. I'm good. Thank you. Praise God. How is life in UK? Oh, praise God. Life in, is good in UK. Thank God. God is faithful. Um, people must have heard of what's going on in UK, but we thank God. God is good all the time. Awesome. That's awesome. So today you are going to be sharing with us in fitting me and you into God's will, God's plan. I'm really excited about that. And I just wanted to just give you the room to begin to speak and let us understand that how is it what does it really mean to fit into God's plan so I'm hoping you can help us understand this as we go through the word today over to you thank you very much my sister uh, I'm glad you asked the question the, the right way around actually because most of us uh, children of God we do ask this question I want to know God's plan for my life now, I want to say in this equation, we're not the important person. The important person, the important one is actually God, the almighty. So the right question to ask is, how can I fit into God's plan? So this itself is not, um, it, it's not wrong for you to ask actually that um, I want to know God's plan for my life. But like I say, what, it is, what is important is actually us asking God, how do I feel fit into your plan and purpose for my life? So how can I, as a child of God, fit into the plan and purpose for my life? Let us imagine God's plan as a jigsaw. We know what a jigsaw is. Only yep. certain shapes can fit into certain spaces on a, on a jigsaw. And we know in uh, Psalm 139, verse 13, B, which says, God knits me together in my mother's womb. Mm -hmm. So God knows all about us. He knows our capability. He knows what makes us tick. Mm -hmm. He knows where we're strong and where we're not so strong. Therefore, wherever, and whatever our hands finds to do, the Bible say, we should do it with all our hearts as unto God and not unto man. This is fitting into God's plan for our life. It is said that God only hits a moving target. If you sit there and say, I want to know the God's plan for my life, I want a prophetic declaration. I want to see dreams. I want to see vision that this is God's plan for my life. I'm saying my brother, my sister, you'll be there for a long time. Step out in faith. Whatever God has said years ago, months ago, yesterday for you to do, just step out in faith. Peter was only able to walk on the water when he stepped out, if he has stayed in that boat, he will mm. stay there. He will not walk on the water. The only person apart from Jesus Christ that has done so. So step out in faith and go on and just do it. Do that thing that God has put in, in your heart. That is God's plan for your life. And you'll find that you will fit neatly into it. Thank you. You know, you said something earlier on that I really want to tap into you know before we started this program you and I were having a conversation and you were sharing about you had retired then you went back out to work and you said you had three opportunities but you chose the least paying opportunities because you felt that was what God wanted you to do can you just share a little bit about that with us so that we can understand because that really speaks to fitting into the plan of God rather than God bless my will bless my plan Absolutely. Um, as I explained to you, I'll just go quickly. Um, I have 33 years of NHS practice as a physiotherapist. Wow. 
And I retired at, at 55 because I could do as if I retired at 65 and get all my benefits, which I did. And I was just staying at home, uh, doing what I can privately. And um, it came to the point that I just felt in my spirit that I need to do more. So I had three job offers. Two of them were in my comfort zone because my last uh, uh, work as an NHS worker was in learning disability. So two of them were in my work comfort zone. They paid more, they would have paid more than the one I'm doing now, a lot more because clinically it was higher grade. And what I'm doing in now is actually a lower grade. Um, but I had it in my spirit that I really wanted to be here. And this is something I've never done in my life before. It's working in a hospice with end of life patients. Mm. And I just felt in my spirit that this is where I need to be. And to go to the glory of God, that is where I am now. I got the job and that is where I am now. And you know what, what God has done. I started in the in mid, middle of the pandemic on uh, 6th of April last year. And what God has done in this short time, honestly speaking, I, if I am to quantify it, spiritually in the spirit level is more than what God has achieved in me in the 33 years of my NHS practice. Wow. I'm absolutely blown away. And I could tell you instances where God, you know, have just used me as someone in his plan in people's life as they approach eternity. And it, it just blows my mind. It absolutely blows my mind. That's interesting you say that. So can you just share like one example? Because you were talking about when people are approaching eternity, there you are working with them. How have you made a difference in their lives? Because we're talking about them actually also fitting into the will of God at the very end of life. Can you just share something about that with us? Absolutely. I, I have several examples, but one that I'll share quickly, it's uh, of a, a young lady, uh, very young and uh, obviously dying. Uh, before they were dying, I was working with them and we were doing very good. So I had built up a relationship with them. And as they approached that time, uh, end of life was declared and I went into her room and I ministered to her. I told her about the Lord Jesus Christ. She was a Buddhist. I told her about the Lord Jesus Christ. She was very weak, not audible in terms of talking, but she was still able to make signs. And you know, I prayed with her and I asked her if she had accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior. And with her last strength, she gave me a thumb up. Wow. Now, if that's not the Holy Spirit, what else? I don't know what else it is. Wow, that's really awesome. Wow. I, I don't even know where to begin. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Because you know what? A lot of times, like from your experience, you talked about having left your comfort zone. Here you are in a new territory. That's not your comfort zone, but you are performing very well. If you remember at the women's conference that we had some time ago, one of the things I was saying is if we really want God to help us, we really must step out of our comfort zone. We yeah. have to come to where we have not been before, new territories, because if we don't, we can experience that newness of what God is about to do. Here you are, you've just been on this job less than a year, and you're talking about the, the, the spiritual impact is actually greater than what you experience over 33 years. That's a lifetime on a job. So wow, that's really awesome. So uh, we're really running out of time, but we are going to be back because I really want us to get through this whole series with you. So what else can you say with that experience now that you are in this new role, you're doing this new job? Tell me how you feel when you get up to go to work every day. How is that experience for you, knowing that you're in a new territory and you are seeing the impactful way that God is using you there? What will you say to that? Wonderful experience. Luckily, I have about 15, 20 minutes drive to work. I tell you, there's not a day that I wake up and I feel, oh no, not that job again. I jump up and I'm happy to go to work. I step into my car, and from the time I step into my car, I pray, Holy Spirit, there I'm 
I'm here again. I'm available. Just use me. Use me as you will. And you know, I step out in faith. I'm a very happy, smiley person. They will tell you mm -hmm. that at work. Very happy person. Hello, hello, how are you? And you know, I've been, I've been doing a Salem course on, on evangelism. You know that mm -hmm. one thing that I took out of it is have a flag. So Jesus Christ is my flag. Every conversation turns into Christ. Every conversation, oh, you're so good, turns into, ah, there's nothing good in me. It's only the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, step out in faith. Just constantly, constantly, let Christ be your flag. Let him be the flag that you put at the front and put at the back of your ship. Nothing more, nothing else. Amen. Thank you so much for that. We're going to continue. We're out of time, but guess what? Sister Kristen is not out of word and we're just okay. getting started. So we will see you next time. Again, this is Dr. Ronnie. It's really been a pleasure having my dear sister, my covenant sister here with me. And we're going to continue on this topic, making sure that we fit into God's plan and will for our lives. God bless you. We will be right back next time. Stay tuned. Bye-bye. <laughs>